There is a web connecting us all. And no, I don't mean the internet. This one is even more important. It's there every time you turn on the lights, drive through town, and yeah, watch YouTube. The electrical grid is a wonder of the modern world, one of the most sophisticated and important systems ever created. These power plants, substations, transmission lines, distribution centers, and other critical infrastructure technologies power every little thing you do every day. And it's not just the little things either. Financial markets, small businesses, and the US government rely on trillions of watts flowing through those transmission lines every day. But that's exactly what makes this a frightening topic because America is currently encountering a power grid crisis. That electrical grid that makes literally everything work is old. It lacks resilience, and it needs a lot more than a facelift to bring it into the 21st century. But there's a reason it's so far out of date. You see it every day, use it every minute. But when's the last time you thought about it? I'm guessing not since the last time it went out. But it's not just a matter of a limb falling on a power line anymore. People are noticing just how vulnerable the system is, and some of them aren't scared to see the chinks in the armor. They see opportunities targets. And the people looking through those crosshairs are threatening the way we live. If they had succeeded, what would have happened? Could have brought down all Silicon Valley. We're talking Google, Apple, all yes. these guys. Yes, that's correct. Rolling blackouts and shortages could cause just about every bad thing you can think of, from economic disruption to chaos and vital services, not to mention leaving tens of millions in the literal dark. This is America's power grid crisis. This morning, more power companies are reporting physical attacks on electric grids to the FBI. Depending on how you look at it, the power grid might just be the biggest, most technologically advanced thing humans have ever created. Generator stations powered by massive dams and nuclear plants, connect to transmission lines and towers, transformer stations, and down to individual consumer distribution lines that connect to your home and the businesses you work for and shop in. If you want to know where it's vulnerable, you have to start by understanding how it works. First, you have to make all that energy. How that happens varies from place to place, but across the US, 60% of all electricity is generated by some form of fossil fuel. The next 20% comes from nuclear power, and the last 20% from a range of renewable sources like solar and wind. Then all those electrons start dancing their way down long distance transmission lines designed to carry high voltages to your friendly neighborhood substation. Those substations then step it down into the lower voltages we actually use, and distribution lines deliver that electricity into houses and hospitals, supermarkets, and sports stadiums. The thing to understand here is that none of this was designed with the idea that someone wants to take it down. At the beginning of the chain, you have programs that were just written to keep the machinery running, not by elite coders to repel all hackers. In the middle, at the substations, you have big, fragile devices, often out in the open, that are the only source of power for tens of thousands of people and extremely important institutions. We kept that simple, but that's the skeleton of the process that powers everything you only think of when the power goes out, and everything you don't too, like traffic lights and military bases. Starting to see why vulnerabilities in the system should make you nervous? Back in 1882, Thomas Edison threw a switch on his first power plant in Lower Manhattan, and a whopping 59 households turned on those newfangled light bulbs. The modern grid has gotten just a bit bigger, servicing hundreds of millions of Americans. To do that, it calls on 11,000 power plants, 3,000 utilities, and over 2 million miles of power lines. That's a titanic achievement of engineering, but it's also a target almost too big to imagine. In January 2022, the Department of Homeland Security reported that domestic terrorists had developed specific plans to attack the U.S. power grid. The attack raises the possibility of a terror attack. And with no suspect or motive, the Department of Homeland Security, FBI, and ATF joining local authorities in the investigation. It wouldn't be too long before those plans, specifically the ones to target remote, hard to secure substations, would be acted on. Current security plans require utility companies to assess risks, threats, and vulnerabilities, and verify them with a third party. If that sounds a little vague, like maybe requiring, I don't know, walls or cameras would be a little more helpful than just an analysis, you're probably onto something. One of the biggest problems we have in the grid is that it's so diffused. I mean, there are miles and miles of tracks of towers that are sitting out there on very unpopulated areas. So the grid itself is really difficult to protect. Of particular interest in substations is the high voltage transformer. There are only 3% of transformers, but they carry 60 to 70% of our electricity. To say these HB transformers are vital to our modern lives is putting it very mildly. The bad news is, they're also one of the parts of the grid most vulnerable to intentional damage. 
They're massively complex, hard to manufacture, and incredibly expensive, and destroying one is frighteningly easy. A little bit of research, planning, and initiative on the part of an attacker will give them everything they need to bring blackouts to entire communities, and it wouldn't take long before having to light a candle to find the bathroom would be the least of your problems. Warnings of potential terror attacks aren't rare, but this exact threat has emphatically stopped being theoretical. Substations have been attacked in North Carolina, Washington, and Oregon, and suddenly the topic is getting some of the attention it deserves. And the similarity of the three attacks tells us that a playbook is being developed that can hit us where it hurts. It starts in the Pacific Northwest. In late November 2022, a Portland General Electric substation in Clackamas, Oregon was hit. A PGE spokesperson describes the event as deliberate and physical. 6,400 homes were left without power, but this was just the dress rehearsal. A new federal memo is warning of similar attacks in Oregon and Washington, and PGE told us today one of its substations was targeted just late last month. The Bonneville Power Administration was hit on Thanksgiving, and it was no accident. Four separate attacks would come in total between Oregon and Washington, and all before the month was up. And get this, the method of attack couldn't be more low tech. Individuals shooting personal firearms at substations. Just take a second to process that. The ingredients of these disasters are some whack jobs who decide they don't like the way things are going, a quick Google and a gun. That's what it takes to turn out the lights to thousands of homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, and emergency response services. More than 30,000 customers in North Carolina are still without power this morning, days after two major power stations were seriously damaged in what officials are calling a targeted attack. It gets scarier when there's more than one domestic terrorist acting alone. About two weeks later, on December 3rd, two different power stations were struck simultaneously at 7 p.m. In seconds, 40,000 residents of Moore County in North Carolina lost power. Police say someone fired shots at two power substations. Mono Kosar Abdi has more on the sabotage that has left tens of thousands in the dark and the cold. Moore County Sheriff Ronnie Field said that state investigators were working with the FBI and that the people who did this, quote, knew exactly what they were doing. This was, again, a deliberate, physical attack. And according to Duke Energy, 30,000 people were without power for days. Officials here say that the outages began Saturday night after two power substations were intentionally targeted and damaged by gunfire. Then we bounce back to the Pacific Northwest. Now it's Christmas weekend and four power stations were attacked. Utility companies and law enforcement trying to figure out who attacked an energy grid again, this time on Christmas Day. Puget Sound Energy experiences power failure before 2.40 a.m. on Sunday. By 5.30 a.m., another substation 20 miles south of Tacoma is hit. A few minutes later, another just two and a half miles east. In the evening, another Puget Sound Energy station is lit on fire. This coordinated set of attacks causes more than 17,000 outages. At least 17,000 people in Washington state finally have their power back after four power substations there were burglarized and damaged on Christmas Day. As in Clackamas and Moore County, the attacks had the goal of bringing down the grid that densely populated regions rely on, and they were all successful. Unfortunately, it's not just little knots of the maladjusted and well-armed who have noticed these vulnerabilities. Smarter and more capable enemies see opportunities too, and they've got something more impressive than a hunting rifle aimed at our vital infrastructure. The whole of the power grid relies on industrial control systems that manage electrical and physical functions. But these vital systems were not designed with security in mind. If they have any, it was often tacked on as an afterthought as they were put in place. If you're a nation state or just a particularly adept hacker, that's exactly the sort of target you pray for. And by targeting industrial control systems, you can achieve dramatic and cascading effects. Instead of individual substations, hackers could hit whole power stations, supply chains, and utilities, in turn impacting emergency services and national defense. That means reaching way above local communities to targets on a geopolitical scale. And these threats aren't theoretical either. Iranian hackers have targeted water facilities in Israel, Russian hackers hit underwater cables and those industrial control systems we just mentioned here in the U.S. And if you were wondering just how big this could go, the Department of Homeland Security has already confirmed that America's adversaries could shut down the entire power grid. If you're the U.S. Department of Energy, none of this looks like good news. 
Your job is to keep running an immense, sprawling system that is incredibly important, and as it turns out, severely outdated and a juicy, vulnerable target for nuts with guns and elite foreign hackers alike. So what's your move? Well, here's where the good news starts. On January 12th, 2022, the Department of Energy launched the Building a Better Grid initiative. The focus of this initiative is developing and upgrading transmission lines to create a more resilient and flexible electrical grid by expending over $20 billion in federal financing to enhance grid resilience, increasing access to reliable, affordable energy and home internet, streamlining the transmission permit and certification process, increasing and improving partnerships with states, stakeholders, and tribal nations to develop energy projects more quickly, developing long-distance, high-voltage transmission facilities to meet never-ending electricity demands, further decentralizing risks by fortifying the power grid with both physical and cybersecurity upgrades. In other words, the Building a Better Grid initiative will create numerous jobs while increasing the power grid's efficiency and resiliency. That is what ushering in a new era of American energy dominance looks like. All this leads to one major question. How do we protect the power grid? The simple answer is that you modernize the current infrastructure. But modernizing doesn't just include upgrading the underlying technology. It also means bringing physical security and cybersecurity requirements into the 21st century. These efforts can be enhanced by improving partnerships between state, local, and the federal government to streamline the process at every stage, including making coordinated investments in the U.S. battery supply chain, R&D of HV transformers, and improving transmission lines. However, these won't be one-off investments. Protecting America's power grid will require ongoing effort, collaboration, and financing from multiple agencies. Sure, federal government regulation and intervention will be key to ensuring its safety and continuity, but without local and state support, improving the power grid, let alone protecting it, will be a patchwork effort at best. What we need at this point is to get the White House to put all the key players together in a room to identify the biggest vulnerabilities and then take steps to reduce them. Electricity is a modern-day heartbeat that keeps local communities alive and thriving. Without the power grid, our economy would shut down and take America's place on the world stage with it. In other words, America's power grid needs to be a national security priority for the foreseeable future. As scary as these vulnerabilities are, it's far from hopeless. The reason we have these problems isn't that they're unsolvable, just that we hadn't realized that they were there. We can fix them, but that's only possible if we make what just might be the most important thing you never think about a real priority. Do you think these are the right steps? Let us know what you think about the power grid and its vulnerabilities in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and leave your thoughts below. It helps us grow and continue to create content that matters. See you next time.